Okay, so I'm going to show you how to make the chicken out of my book. And what you'll need is a 24 peg loom. It does not matter, just so long as you have a yarn equivalent. For instance, if you're using 5 8 inch, you want to use a size 7, 6 to 7. If you're using a 3 8, you want to use anywhere from a worsted to a bulky. All right, then bulky is pushing it, but it keeps it nice and tight where you can stuff it. All right. And in the picture, the one that's in the picture was made from a 3 8 inch gauge. Okay. So, what we want to do is you have um, several colors that you need. You need a red and a yellow and a main color. I'm going to do a white chicken and I'll need a red and a main color. Okay, so what we have is a head. It says head, flat, 20 pegs, main. All right, so I want our main color. And we want to draw string cast on flat for 20 pegs. Okay, so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Basically, there should be four pegs. Then you're going to work back in the direction you came from. Okay. So, I'm going to knit back and every other stitch and back the direction you came from. Okay? Okay. Now, what it says is row 1 through 4 is a knit. So, this one's pretty easy. So, you're going to knit back and forth for 4 rows. So, here's Row one. Okay, so you have row one. So you can get back at one, two, three, four. So four rows. And then pause the video, get that much done, and we come back. We'll be ready to start doing the comb kind of thing to where we're going to be having the red section. So you'll definitely need your red ready to go in and start doing this section through yeah. here, okay? All right, go ahead and pause the video, get your four rows done, and I'll come back. Okay, I've done my four rows, and I'm ready to start on row five. So what it says to do is to knit for eight. So I'm going to count this as a one. Let me see if I can get this in a better placement. Count this as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, then it says to change color yarn to red. I'm going to take that down. And I'm not going to cut the original color. All right. All right. Then it says to knit one. Okay. Then it has a comb bubble, as it's called. Uh, sounds kind of funny, doesn't it? It's knit two for eight rows. If you've been watching my videos lately with the new patterns, you should be used to this. So, it has a B-O-L-B -B in there, which means we need to add a stitch marker to the two stitches. Okay. Then it says to knit two for eight rows. So here's row one, two, three, four,
five, six, seven, and eight. And it says to bring the original loops back. Which I'm doing right now. And it says knit two together two times. So knit two together. One, two, two times. Then knit one. Okay. Then it says to change color to main, which is your main color. And we're doing white in the book I did bring. And what it says to do here is it says to knit eight. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. Okay. So that is row five. Now we're going to go to row six. And what it says to do is to knit eight. It's going to count as one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I'm going to kind of make sure that this crosses up and over so that you have a connection there. Okay. Then what you're going to do is knit four. One, two, three, four. Then you're going to pick up your white, and then it says to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, Now, it says row 7 through 12 is repeat rows 5 and 6, which are the last two rows we did. Okay? So you're going to repeat those rows for a total of three more times. Okay? So, yeah, three more times. So you're going to do this three more times on these last two rows. And then when we come back... We will be ready to do the next section, okay? And I'm going to show you a little trick. You have a gap developing here. I'm going to show you a little trick to tighten that up, okay? So go ahead and pause the video. Get your six rows done that are a repeat of row five and six. And when we come back, we'll be ready to continue on with the hit. Okay, so what we're doing here is you see that we have our little comb here that we've developed, right? And you'll see there's kind of a spacing here, okay? So um, what you'll want to do is it says to, on row 13, to just knit, okay? So I'm going to show you a little trick. So go ahead and knit over, and then you're going to tie off your red, okay? I went ahead and cut my red, and when I work my way over here, I'm going to tie it off. And then I'm going to show you a trick on how to close up the white so that it's as smooth as the image in the picture. I'm just going to knot that a few times. Okay, so you see all these... Um, long pieces here. Now this is not proper technique here, okay? It's not proper, but I have, this is what I like to do. Because what it does is it tightens it and you don't have the stretch. Alright, so what I like to do is grab, stick the crochet hook through the two, grab the second one, pull it through. Then I want to go up to that third one, grab it, and pull it through. 
go up to the next one, grab it, and pull it through. Just going to do this all the way up. Okay. And what this is going to do is it's going to snug it up. Okay, and it, it gets a little bit more stiff the closer you get to pegs, okay. And um, once you get it, then you can stick it onto, once you have that last one, you can stick it on there, okay. And what that's just done is tighten it up, and as you can see, there is less of a break in there. All right, it makes a huge difference to do this technique. All right, and it's where you just go in and you pull that in like that, okay? And then what you want to do is knit your way over, and when you go in and you knit that, you knit those two over, okay? You just want to knit those two over. And then knit your way to the end, okay? Not bad, right? And that is how you fix that whole area when doing a small section like that on the comb. And trust me, it really helps. When you go in and look, it's a lot less spacious between there, okay? It makes a huge difference um, to do that method, all right? It just tightens it up enough. Okay, so um, row 13 was knit, and then row 14 is internal decrease from 20 pegs to 10 pegs. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pick up one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Nine. I'm going to place stitch nine on peg ten. Okay. And I'm just going to place two stitches on every peg after that. Okay. This is my internal decrease. Now there's a number of ways you can do it. You can go ahead and decrease all the way. You move one over. Knit, move on over, knit, and then you can bring all the stitches together and tighten up your stitches and that kind of thing. Um, but I personally like to do this method. It's entirely up to you. There's no exact science to this. Okay, so now I have half the stitches here. I should have five. One, two, three, four, five. See? Okay, then you want to go over here. And you want to do the same thing. You want to lift up all them stitches. Okay. Alright. Just one. Yeah. I'm going to place two on each peg after that. Now one side is always going to be easier than the other. I'm not going to lie on you on that one. Okay, one side is always easier than the other. Two stitches on each peg. And last stitch. There you go. Okay. You've now half your stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so you've done your decrease. Now you need to knit the row. Okay? And that completes your internal decrease. Alright? So then what comes next? You're going to change color. Alright? And this is where you're probably going to want some scrap yarn, like the red. Um, you want some yellow for the beak and that kind of thing, okay? So, you don't want to go and buy a whole bunch of uh, different colors, all right? So, go ahead and knit your way over, and if it's too tight, you can knit one at a time over, not a problem, all right? Second half 
push these a little tighter. knitted those together. Pull that out. And as you can see, a heck of a lot smoother on the sides. Nice and smooth on the sides. That is what that technique does. It snugs it up to the point where it's nice, clean on the inside, but it's also a smooth, clean transition on the outside. Alright, that's just my own personal little preference there. Okay, next it says to change color to red. And this is where your um, little wattle is going to be. And I'm going to do a proper change color. Okay, so before I cut my white, I'm going to tie a half knot around the base. Okay, and I'll pull it all the way down, kind of pull it tight. Cut my yarn, and I'm going to do a half knot, and then pull it as close to the base as possible. And then pull it. Okay, and what that's called is a magic knot or fisherman's knot. It depends on your background and knots, okay. I knew it as a fisherman's knot first, really, okay. And when you do that kind of knot, you can cut it real close and not have to worry about having problems, okay. Alright, so next thing's next. You're going to create your little wattle area underneath the, uh, the beak. And so what it says to do is it says to e-wrap chain 10 bring the original loops back okay so you might want to use a stitch marker for this to bring the original loop back okay right. so you're going to e-wrap chain so here's going to be one and two and three and four and five, and six, and seven, and eight, and nine, and ten. And eight. It says to bring the original loop back. Right. And bring the original loop back. give you a little bit of fun, but you can do it. Okay, next. Then it says to knit eight. Okay, so we're going to knit eight. We're going to go one, two, three, four, Seven and eight. Okay. We're going to do the same thing. We're going to e wrap chain ten, bring the original leg back. All right. Then it's going to tell you to change color again. So here is one. And Two, three, four, five, 
six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. Okay. And we're going to take that back, bring the original loop back, and put that on it. Okay. Completed that row. Next it says to change color to yellow. Okay. Okay, what you're going to do is you're going to tie that color around the main color, push down as far as possible, cut the yarn, put a half knot around, try to pull it as close to the base as possible, tighten, pull, and cut short. Okay. Here's your magic yarn. All right. From here it says to knit two together, knit eight, knit two together. Okay. So I'll pull that. All right. So what we want to do? Knit those two. I need to ear up it. Make sure we get it over. Knit those two together. All right. Then knit eight, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, and then knit two. Now, at this point, what it says to do, we're finishing up the beak. So what it says to do now is it says to decrease. So take that outer stitch, move it out of the line. Then it says take this outer stitch over here, move it over one. And then we're going to knit two together. One. Two, the knits one, two, three, four, five, six, then knit two together. Then it says to knit the row. It says to decrease again. Okay, so I'm at two. Together, knit four, one, two, three, four, and knit two together. And it says to knit again, so knit your way across. Okay, then it says to decrease again. Mm 
knit two together, knit two, knit two together, then it says to knit the row again, and it says to draw a string bind off. to sew that beat up so it's going to give us a little sewing stuff. Not much because we don't want to have too much there. I'll usually have to go the opposite side of where your tail is, toss the bottom loop over, and pull through. Okay. And then toss the bottom loop over, pull through. Bottom loop over, pull through, press the bottom loop over, pull through. Tighten. Alrighty, look what you got here. Okay. Looks like a chicken to me. There is your head. Okay, so what you want to do, you want to sew up that beak, okay? And then you want to close off the back of that head now. I personally would want to sew down a little bit. And then when you sew, you sew to here, okay? So go ahead and close off the back of the head. Right, and sew up the beak to just past the wattles. Right, and then we will want to add eyes. Um, I typically add safety eyes. You want small eyes because they tend to have smaller eyes. Okay, so and you're going to want to get that lined up with the uh, first part of the comb first notch of the comb on both sides. So uh, you want to get some pretty small eyeballs for that. Okay, let's go ahead and pause the video, get that much done, and we will come back and I'll show you how to finish up this head. Okay, as you can see, I closed off the back of my head. I sewed up my beak. And what I've done is followed a line from my first bump on the comb closest to the beak and went down. Okay, and you can see I did it on both sides. You want to kind of look and make sure that it's even. Once you find that it's even, you go in and you add your washers. Okay. Now I am, for as small as this is, I'm using a um, eight millimeter eye. You can go as low as a six millimeter. All right. And you can do eyelids if you order from the eyeglass online um, company. All right. And I'll put a link for that below. South Carolina company makes absolutely wonderful product when it comes to these eyes. All right. So what you want to do now? You want to stuff your head. It shouldn't take much stuffing. Okay. What I've done is also stuffed my um, beak strand up into the beak. Makes it a little easier to stuff that. Okay. You can cinch the eyes if you like. But with the chicken, I don't think that it requires that so much. Okay. Alright. So. As I said, you can cinch the eyes if you like. You don't have to. There is your chicken.
Okay. Alright, so what's next is our body. Okay. So, we're going to start back with our point. Alright, so we're going to go to our body. I'm going to draw a string flat. Draw a string cast on flat 24 pegs. Okay. So I'll show you how that's done. So we're going to do 24 pegs. We're going to draw a string cast on flat. We're going to be hitting our main color of our chicken. Okay, once you get to the end here, you start working your way back. Okay, so in the pattern it says to knit for two rows. So what you want to do is you want to pause the video and you want to knit for two rows. Okay, so all you're wanting to do is just start knitting okay so you're going to knit one two and we should be back here so pause video and get that much done okay Alright, so what it says to do next on row 3, it says to knit 23, wrap and turn, knit 22, wrap and turn. Alright, and you're going to be doing this until you have 9 single stitches, okay. So what you're going to do is you're going to knit 23, so you know there's 24 peg lumps, you go over to just before the last peg in the loom. Okay, we have 23. As you can see, I just did. Wrap behind the peg and turn. You're going to leave that peg alone and you're going to knit 22. So you're going to knit 22, which is almost all the way around, just before your last peg. Alright. There's your knit 22. Okay, shove those down. Then you're going to wrap behind the next peg and turn. Okay. Then it says to knit 21 wrap and turn, knit 20 wrap and turn, knit 19 wrap and turn, knit 18 wrap and turn, knit 17 wrap and turn, so forth and so forth until you have knit 9 wrap and turn to get you to row 11. What I'm going to do is tell you to pause the video and get yourself to that knit 9 wrap and turn and then we will be ready to start row 11. Okay, and this is where we're going to be adding a leg in. Right. And I'll explain how to do the leg. You're going to definitely want a yellow ready when we get there. Alright. So, I'm going to show you one more wrap and turn. You make your way over and wrap and turn. Now you have two stitches you aren't touching. Okay, so then you're going to get your way over. Okay, and then you wrap behind the peg and turn. You now have two wrap and turns. On the end peg. So keep going until you get to a knit nine wrap and turn. Then you'll come back and we should be ready to start row 11. And this is where we're going to be adding a leg in. Okay. And um, this is where we're going to be doing the legs. All right. So go ahead and pause the video and get that much done. And when we come back, we'll be ready to be doing our leg section. Okay, you can see that I have done my wraps and turns, 
and I should have nine single stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And then you're going to do a wrap and turn. Okay, that was the last thing we ended with on row 10. Now we're going to do row 11. Okay, so what we're going to do is we're going to knit eight. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All right, you're going to wrap and turn. All right. Then it says to knit two. One and two. Then it says you're ready to start your legs section. Okay, so what you want to do is um, Stay with the color you've got. Let me make sure we're not doing this right. We do have to bring original loops back, so we're going to need to do um, three stitch markers because we're working over three. All right. So we're going to stick with the color we're on, and it'll tell you when to change. All right. So on the next three, you're going to place a stitch marker because you're going to be bringing the original loop back. Okay. Keep that in mind. Two and three. And because these legs don't need to be stuffed with anything, we're not going to worry about doing just the other edges. Okay. We're not stuffing these legs. All right. So what it says to do is to knit three for six rows. Okay. Oops. One more. Let's check the work. Okay. So you're going to knit three for six rows. That's the first thing that tells to do. All right. So there's going to be row one. that it says you need to change color yarn and my bet is you don't need to cut that original color and be coming right back to it. All right so we're just going to go in and we're going to attach our yellow yarn. Then what it says to do, it says to knit three for three rows. So you're just going to knit for three rows. So here's going to be one, two, and three. After that, you want to e-wrap chain for 10, bring the original loops back on all three stitches, okay? Because it does have you to e-wrap chain, bring the original loops back, e-wrap chain, bring the original loops back, e-wrap chain, bring the original loops back. You're going to do that over the three. And then it says to knit two together three times and then start working your way back around, okay? So, what that means. We are up chain 10. So here's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, 
seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and to it's not bringing these original loops back here. It's bringing the original loop back from the beginning of the chain we did. Okay, so you're gonna find back to the beginning there, and that should be original loop right there. You bring that back. Okay, and let's see if you can't pull that loop and push it into the middle. Okay, now if you don't want to try hunting for it, you can always put a stitch marker in there, okay? Not difficult. You can just put a stitch marker in there. If you don't like trying to hunt for that original loop, you can just put it in there. Alright, now let's do this again. You wrap chain. Because what you want to do is bring the original loop back up. Okay. And put it on there. You're creating your little toes is what you're doing. Alright. So, I want to probably do this again. Mark it. Do the same thing, a wrap chain ten. So there's one more. Okay. Um, move that over. Bring the original loop back up and down. Then it says to knit two together three times. Okay. Suggest one at a time. So there's one. And two. And three. Oops, sorry. Hard to see. Okay, next you want to go in and knit for three rows. So here's row one. And here is row two. And row three. shove that down as far as you can. Alright, so at this point we're ready to change it back. So I'm going to go in and I'm going to cut and tie off my yellow. Okay, I'm going to pick back up on my white that I didn't cut. Alright, and then I'm going to knit three for seven rows. Hold on, let me make sure. Knit three for seven rows. Bring the original loops back. Yes, seven rows. So here's one. Two. Okay. Then it says bring the original loops back, which means your original original loops. Okay, make sure you got the right ones. Okay, so there's one, two, and three. Okay, 
So looking down here, there is your little chicken foot. Um, you can try shoving those back in there, but you'll be able to pull them out. Okay. So I'm gonna take those off. And then it says to knit two, wrap and turn. So one, two, wrap and turn. And that finishes off row 11. Then it says to knit two, and knit two together three times. There's one, there's two, and there's three. Don't worry about those. They have, they have loose ends, which means you can cut them. Okay, you're going to knit one, wrap and turn, knit six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, then it says, we're going on to row 13, it says to knit six and knit two together. So we're going to be working our way back out. Okay, so there we're going to knit six, one, two, three, four, five, six, knit two together. Okay. Then here's where we're going to do our other leg. Okay. We're going to start with the peggy finish with. You're going to knit two. Then it says leg, which means you're going to go back in the video and you're going to repeat the exact same thing we just did here in this spot with this leg. Okay, it's the exact same thing. <coughs> no different. Okay, and come back and I will finish showing you the rest of the body because it's pretty much downhill after you get this leg done because you're on the other half of the body now, okay? So the chicken doesn't take very long. It's just keeping up. There's a lot of short rowing and that kind of thing. Okay, so go ahead and pause the video. Go back in the video if you need to. Complete another leg, just like we did. And then what you want to do is uh, we'll come back and then we'll, we'll finish up row 14. And I'll show you how to finish up the row. I mean, how to finish up the body which isn't bad. And then we have wings one and two to do, and then to assemble. Okay, you see two legs here. Two chicken mm. legs. Yay. Okay, so what we want to do next is, it says to, in order to finish up row 14, you need to knit two, knit two together, okay? Okay, then you need to knit three, knit two together three times, and then knit two, knit two together. So knit three, one, two, three, knit two together three times. So here's one, two, three, and then knit two. You want to get those. And then knit two together. At this point, it should start really going real smooth. It's knit nine, knit two together, knit ten, knit two together, and so forth. Okay, so one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, knit two together. Start with the peg you finished with, and so forth. So go ahead and knit back and forth until you have no more wraps and turns to add in, and then we'll finish up the body. Okay, so as you can see, I have no more wraps and turns. I finished the other half of the body. There's my legs. Okay, we're going to sew those up a little later. And if you would like a chicken that stands on its legs, you can go ahead and work on getting some... Um, pipe cleaners, okay, and you can wind them up, get them nice and stiff, and you can actually send those up in there and uh, work on getting some legs that are stiffer and you can sew around it. 
So now that we've finished doing our knit around, knit two together on our last one, what it says on row 31 and 32 is to just knit. Then you want to do a drawstring bind off. Now, when it comes to the drawstring bind off, you can see that I've not touched this section here. There's a reason to that. You're only going to pull it to where all the um, stitches are straight, not tightened together. Okay, and there's a reason for that. All right. So what you want to do is you want to knit for two rows, okay? So go ahead and pause the video and knit for two rows. When we come back, I will show you how to go in, do the drawstring bind off, and how to go about dealing with the body. Okay, so now what we want to do is we want to draw string bind off and for me I'm actually going to be because it's flat I'm going to be starting on this side now normally I go on the opposite side because I'm not pulling this tight I'm wanting to pull it to where all the stitches just line up nice and evenly for me to sew it makes it a little easier so what you want to do is you want to go ahead and you want to Toss the loop over and then pull your tail through. You want to kind of um, also cut a fairly long tail so that you have room to sew up. Okay, so um, you're just going to go around and um, you may feel like it's a little tight. You want to just pull it to where it's smooth at the end okay so go ahead and pause the video and get all your stitches off and I'll kind of show you what you need the great thing about a drawstring is if you get it too tight you can pull it out some so that you can get it to where we need it okay so we just bound bind it off okay and what I like to do is just pull it to where all those stitches are lined up really nicely okay and you do the same thing on the other side. You just want to kind of pull it to where it looks the same on the other side. Okay. Again, keep in mind if you feel like you pull it too tight, it is okay. All right. You can keep on pulling it. All right. So here you have it. All right. Now, this doesn't look much like a chicken, I'm sure, but this is your tail end and this is your head end, okay? And so what you want to do is you want to actually sew up to about where the head is and you want to stuff and then you're going to want to sew on your head, okay? And when you do that, it actually kind of looks like it, all right? Now, um, I'm actually doing a separate video for the wings because the wings I use or more like something you could use for angel wings, owl wings, um, a standard bird wing rather than a bat wing. I have a video out for bat wings or anything that's more reptilian wings. I'm going to also put a video out that's more feathered wings, okay? And I'm going to give you a link below the video on how to get there, okay? And then you're going to sew them on. All right, so what you want to do is you want to take the long tail that you've done and you're going to um, sew up as much as possible. Okay, so you're going to sew up to about where the head would go. All right. And I'm going to stuff that chain, that first one I've pulled in. Okay. Now keep in mind there's these bridge areas between your notches and you want to you want to get those areas okay and what that does is um, it keeps the stitching even okay now um, because you're sewing a drawstring bind off and cast on what I like to do personally when I get to a section that is more of the tail I'll pull it a little bit more taut so that it has a lift to it like a hen would if you're wanting to do a rooster that's a whole different thing okay I haven't done a rooster all I've done is a little hen okay 
And we're going to do one more and then I'm going to pull it kind of tight and that will create my little tail area that will have a lift. That will be more like a realistic chicken. Okay, so there is our lift of our tail. See? Then you kind of want to keep it straight for the rest of it as much as possible. Okay, that's the only section where you're going to pull, but you want to keep finding the bridge between each notch and getting that pulled. Okay, now if you want there to be more curvature, you can kind of pull it taut overall and it will add more curve to the entire back, which is typical of a chicken okay to have that more curvature and that's the kind of other benefit of having done a drawstring okay so if you want there to be more curve in general you can just pull it and you can see that curve beginning okay but in the meantime you just keep working your way over until you are ready to stuff okay so you're actually getting close to being done with the chicken for the most part. Um, you, you could stop here and not bother to add the wings, but you know, where's the fun in that, right? Again, you can pull that fairly taut so that it has more of a curve on the back side. We're getting close to where we want to stop and stuff our body. And then we'll be ready to want to sew the head on. Okay. That's going to be pretty tight. Okay. So, you can kind of pull that a little bit more. But, for the most part, that's it. Now, you want to keep that open to be able to stuff the body. So, we're going to go in and we're going to stuff our body, all right? Do that head section. I always like to go to the far end first to start stuffing, okay? And you are working with a smaller hole, but you want that because if you leave too big of a hole, it makes it harder to go in and stuff the animal. And let me tell you, it's an art form on stuffing, all right? It requires shaping, pushing into areas. Um, there's a lot to shaping a animal, okay? Let's go ahead and pause the video and get that stuffed to desire and um, go ahead and sew up your little chicken legs and if you want you can add um, something to make them stiff so that the chicken will stand okay but I don't ever like mine standing it's a hen I like it looking like she's laying an egg okay I've sewn up my legs I've sewn that up I've stuffed it and now what you want to do is sew on your head and I usually just weave that around. So go ahead and pause the video and get that done. And then you want to go and do your wings. And then I will show you how you want to add those. Okay, as you can see, I have knitted my wings. So you'll want to hit that video to uh, knit your wings, okay? And I've got me a nice long tail to be able to sew on. All right. So, how you want to do this is you want to go in and get your needle ready. Okay. So, when you go to sew this on, how you want to do this is you want to go in and find the side you want to do it on. Okay, so it's this side. You want your longer tips. Let's see if I can get this to keep this at an angle. Okay, you want your longer tips at the top and your shorter tips at the bottom. Okay? Now, you can get these a little further up if you'd like. Um, it's up to you. You mostly just want to sew it down on the side. Okay, it's not an exact science, as I call it. Okay, and yeah, I'm just going to stuff that tail up in there to give it a little extra poof when I go to sew it on. Okay, and so what I'm going to do is just go in and sew it down. I am going to try to find my most outer edges. Okay, 
so that I get the full span of my wings, okay. And I'm going to sew all the way around. I'm going to sew it down through here. I'm going to sew up through here, okay. And then I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. And then the chicken is done, okay. So I'm going to sew up through here. I'm going to sew down there and then sew back up. I'm going to go and do the same thing with the other side. All right, and there is your chicken. That is how you eliminate a chicken.